All right. Do I look good? Do I sound good? Let's do it. What's up everybody, Just Brewin here, and as you can tell, we've moved into the garage. The home brewery now has a little bit more space, as well as some new equipment. Behind me I've got a 15 gallon brew kettle, a 16 gallon Coleman cooler that's been converted into what we call a mash tun, and an 8 gallon brew kettle. All this stuff together really is going to get us a new processes, uh, hopefully better beer, but instead of using our typical extract recipes, we're going all grain. Um, you may have heard about this if you've done a little bit of research, but really what I'm doing is this process is going to be very close to what the pros do. So your local breweries, um, if you happen to get a chance to see any of their equipment, this is a very, very, very small scale version of that. Again, the most that I can do with this is 10 gallons. Right now I'm sticking with five, but I did want to future proof myself in case I did go all in and do want, want to do a 10 gallon batch. I now have the equipment for it. Right now I've got four gallons of 165 degree water in our mash tun. That water is what we call our strike water. To make a long story short, that water is what's gonna be used to mix with our grains. At that temperature, the enzymes in the grains are gonna get converted into sugars. Those sugars are gonna get eaten up by the yeast, and that's what produces alcohol. So this is arguably one of the more important parts of the process, and we're just getting started. For today's all grain brew day, we're gonna be brewing Soko Home Brews Warm Winter Ale. It's gonna be a nice full bodied kind of cinnamony gingery sweet seasonal beer it should come out perfect timing for hopefully what will be a cold front or colder weather here in texas um, we're getting right towards the beginning of our seasonal beers um, where you're going to be seeing a lot more dark sweet chocolatey type beers on the shelves and i'm hoping to try to get that started with soco home brews warm winter ale the grain bill the recipe consists of 11 pounds of Golden Promise as the base malt, 12 ounces of Crystal 80L malt, 8 ounces of biscuit malt, 8 ounces of crystal wheat, and 5 ounces of chocolate malt. All of this should come together to make a kind of sweet, kind of bitter, cinnamony, gingery beer. Um, I'm going to be adding 6 of cinnamon as well as ginger root and some juniper berries to this. So it's going to be seasonal, it's going to be very Christmassy, and we're, I wanted to go ahead and get the Christmas season started a little bit early with the warm winter ale. Once our one hour mash is done, we're going to start sparging. Sparging is draining wort out of the mash tun while putting hot water into the mash tun. By doing this, not only are you draining it and filling your boil kettle for the boil, you're also going to be trickling off any extra sugars or proteins that may be on the grains because we want that when we start to pitch our yeast. All those sugars are going to convert into alcohol, which will essentially make a stronger beer, which is a little bit what we want for something like this. This is a warm winter ale, so that warm usually consists of some type of spice or sometimes even um, alcohol. So that can give you a warm, fuzzy feeling, and that's what we're going for in this beer. I just finished sparging. I was able to get the rest of the wort out of the mash tun and into the boil kettle that's now on the burner and almost at a boil. Once it gets there, we'll set that timer, we'll add our hops, and we'll go from there. Once it's at a boil, we'll set a timer for 45 minutes and we'll throw in our first edition of hops, which are a half ounce of Millennium Hops. With 15 minutes left in the boil, we're gonna throw in the other half ounce of Millennium Hops. We're also gonna throw in what we call World Flock Tablets and some yeast nutrient. The yeast nutrient is going to give the yeast just a little bit more help to, and hopefully complete the uh, fermenting. The World Flock Tablets are for a clearer end product. At the same 10 minute marker, we're gonna be adding two or three sticks of cinnamon, a half ounce of ginger root, and one ounce of juniper berries. This is what's gonna give it that winter Christmassy feel, and I can't wait. I haven't had a beer like this in a very long time, and hopefully we'll be able to put it on tap right there in the keyser. More on that later. So this time around to chill the wort, I did something a little bit different. I went ahead and hooked up the water hose to the wort chiller, um, but over the last few brews, I've actually been capturing that water that went through the wort chiller. Yes, it was hot water, but once you let it sit in the garage for a little bit, it becomes room temperature. So actually, that was the water that I used not only for brewing, um, but the strike water, I used it for cleaning. So I'm trying to um, create as small a footprint as possible. 
This time around, I cut, used a combination of the wart chiller and an ice bath to chill the wart. I took the brew kettle, put it in the mash tun after I had cleaned it out, put some water and some ice inside it for an ice bath, ran the um, wart chiller. At that point, it was like a regular cooling process. I was hoping it was gonna go by a little bit faster by using the wart chiller and the ice bath, but it was still a bit hot out, so our groundwater was still pushing 80, 90 degrees, so I was never really able to get it past 100 or so. I went ahead and put it inside the keezer and set the keezer down to about 40 degrees in hopes that that will bring the temperature down. Hopefully, in a matter of a couple hours, I can go ahead and put it in the fermenter, pitch my yeast, and then start fermentation. Um, at this point, it's not very different from any other brew. Um, the process was a little bit longer, but I'm still new to it, so hopefully if all this goes well, we'll still have a really good beer on the end. So here we are two weeks later. I have with me the ever amazing Alicia Tudor to do the tasting and first impressions with me. Um, the warm winter ale sat in the fermenter for about two weeks. Um, I cold crushed it for about two days after that and then carbonated it for about two days. So here we are um, 18 days later with the, our first impressions of the warm winter. It's definitely not as dark as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more porter stout-y colored. I had a feeling it was going to be kind of a brown ale-ish color just based on some of the malt. Um, mm. A lot of the malts that were in it were very light colored. Um, I did show the grains earlier, um, and the only dark one was the chocolate malt. And it was, oh, this uh, is the one you separated, right? Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. It was really nice. It was really cool, like seeing all the all those colors together. Um, but the only dark malt was the chocolate malt, um, and there is um, just that. It is a dark brown color. I mean, more more just a brown color, um, not even a dark brown, especially when the light hits it. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the color um, on the nose. Yep, it definitely smells like uh, ginger, right? On the nose. Um, yeah, I, I'm getting a lot of ginger. Um, we cook a lot of Asian food around here, of all very, different varieties, and it's a very familiar uh, spice to me. Very soy sauce-y, very. Um, well, there, there was ginger mm -hmm. along with actual ginger in it, along it's with uh, cinnamon, cinnamon sticks, sticks and, and juniper berries. Whatever those are. Juniper berries. I, all I know is I've heard juniper. I've only ever heard juniper around Christmas time. Yeah, it smells really good. I do like the smell. It is a little spicy um, in that like there's spice, not like spicy like hot, but there is some spice. That's got to be the cinnamon. All right, on to tasting. One tongue dip. Definitely ginger on the front. I am getting a little bitterness or tartness. I'm not sure if that's the chocolate malt or the juniper berries. I don't know if it's because I know what's in it, but for me, it, it literally goes from ginger to cinnamon to that tartness that mm -hmm. we believe is the juniper berries. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to taste to these malts individually. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't say like what the malt brings to it other than like the body because there is it does coat your tongue just a little bit um, even just one sip you taste it all over mm -hmm. um, it's a little like heavy at first if that makes sense um, but it's really light yeah it's it's <laughs> it's pretty thin all things considered um, but it does have a um, I won't I won't call it a texture to it but you can feel the beer mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. so this might be a a fun one to put on nitro in the future too, which I really see. Yeah. Like bring that extra lightness. I The first thing I noticed as the bubbles were coming up um, was that this would have looked really good and tasted really good um, on nitro. You get that creamy um, mouth feel out of the, the nitrogen in it. Um, on, the, on the ABV, um, the original gravity I hit spot on, which is I've only ever done maybe two, two or so times. Um, the final gravity, so when the yeast was done eating away at the sugar, the amount of sugar that was left was much lower than the recipe predicted. So the recipe predicted to leave this at about six and a half, six point seven percent. I did a yeast starter, which is essentially getting a little bit of beer ready up front a couple days later, pitching the yeast into it so that it can eat away the sugar that's in this wort, and then pitch that into the fermenter. Um, that way, it's already had a two-day start, pretty much. Um, that resulted in 
a relatively, I won't say fast fermentation because I just let it sit anyway. Um, but it actually ate away more sugar than the recipe was expecting, which left us with a 7.1% winter warm, warm winter ale. Lucky number seven. Yeah, this is, and that, that alcohol in it's really going to give you the, the warm fuzzies. Mm. So definitely a really good beer, but you have to be careful with something like this. And I, I dig, I, I like the, I like the um, smell of the ginger, tasting the ginger on the other hand, maybe not so much. Um, I would maybe do ginger in the whirlpool, um, which just gives you a little bit more aroma out of whatever you're adding rather than the flavor. Um, or even just add a little bit to secondary, actually go through a secondary fermentation and then put a little bit, maybe two and a half ounces of ginger in it. I think it was five ounces of ginger, I don't really remember. Um, I said it earlier, so earlier, the earlier amount, but less than that. Would you drink this again? If I brewed it again, would you drink it? Because granted, we got to get it off tap to make way for another beer. Um, it's not exactly my cup of tea, one might say, but if we were to make those adjustments, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to trying it again, for sure. I do think this beer would be a hit at a party, though. A Christmas party. Well, anything we do is going to be a hit at a party. That's so. true. I like it. Six out of ten. Six. Six and a half. Six and a half? I like IPAs. Is this an IPA? It's not IPAs. Oh. It's not an IPA, no. But I'm saying, like, if it were a beer that's more up my alley, I would, I would probably rate it higher. Oh, six and a half, comma, I like IPAs. Yes. Okay. Yes. As an, as, a, as an IPA drinker myself, this is going to get l fewer points out of ten, gen likely. If it were amazing, then of course it would have been up there in the eight, nine, even potentially higher. Mm -hmm. um, but... I really think so, too. He agrees. 7 out of 10. Yeah? 7.1 out of 10. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Very <laughs> nice callback. That'll do it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to visit justbrewing.com where I've published my brew schedule. So you should be able to take a look at the day that I'm brewing. Um, and if you have any questions, you can definitely leave them in the comment section. If you want to support the channel and your fellow humans, visit justbrewing.com slash merch where all merch proceeds are going to be donated to charity. But well, we hope to see you for the next brew. Thanks for viewing. Just, Just brewing. brewing. Fucking perfect. We nailed it. We're getting better. Chug. Chug, chug, chug. It's really like a shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super good tea. Let's do it.